What is up guys, it's your boy Swalem here, back with another Dragonflight gold making video. So today we'll be checking out three different gold farms that you can do at the beginning of Dragonflight, and I want to give you this, these gold farms to you as early as possible so you can take advantage of them before other people if you're watching this video. So this, these gold farms are based on my testing on the beta, and before we get into the video I want to say that I have been doing a lot of testing on the Dragonflight beta, and throughout my testing process I've found over 40 different Dragonflight gold farms, all of which you can get access to right now by checking out my Dragonflight gold guide through the link down below. Also, by using the code Solheim, you can get it for half price right now to celebrate the launch of Dragonflight. So if you want that guide, it's half price by using the code Solheim, which you can enter at the checkout. The link to that one will be down below at the, at the pinned comment and the top of the description. So definitely, if you do want to farm gold in Dragonflight, check that one out. It, once again, it contains 150 pages of information and 44 or 40 plus different Dragonflight gold farms and I'll keep updating the guide as well throughout the, the expansion itself and we have a gold guide exclusive discord survey and some of these gold farms that I have found will be really really profitable on day one but they will lose their value over time so if you want to make a lot of gold on day one well here you go okay so with that being said let's check out the video and let's check out some gold farms before I show you the farms though I want to show you why these materials were in demand so you know that what you're farming for is actually worth your time and you know that will be a actual demand for these items in the market so by you actually being the supplier or actually well yeah you're the supplier of the materials you will be making some gold and dragonflight is going to be a very very good expansion for gold farmers there's a lot of actual demand for a lot of the materials you're farming in the open world it is going to be crazy so today we're checking out some elemental farms two elemental farms and a skinning farms so just i want to show you guys a couple of crafts where you're using these elementals so i'm using blacksmithing and inscription as examples here. Blacksmithing serves as an example for every single crafting profession. When it comes to crafting gear, so for example blacksmithing, leatherworking and tailoring will all be using materials and especially blacksmithing. So right here you can see for example obsidian seared alloy requires one awakened order and an awakened fire to craft. Frost fire alloy requires awakened fire and awakened frost. Infurious alloy don't require any of them but two awakened irons and also primal molten alloy will be requiring one awakened earth and one awakened fire so when you're crafting an item like for example uh, this one right here you will see there's no actual requirement for elementals but you need 10 obsidian seared alloys which once again brings you back to awakened fire and awakened order and if you check out for example primal molten right here you will have primal molten alloys so in itself there's no elemental requirements but to craft these 16 molten alloys you will need eight elemental fire or awakened fire and eight awakened earth because you get two primal molten alloys per craft so there's going to be an insane demand for these awakened elementals early early on in the expansion both for crafting professions like this and also for example inscription if we just filter this one to unlearned items and you go all the way down to for example dark moon cards and dark moon deck boxes you will see for example just in the dark moon deck box for the dancing card you will need 10 awakened air just to craft this one, 10 awakened fire to craft this one, 10 awakened frost to craft that one, and 10 awakened earth to craft that one. Also, you will need these when you're crafting the cards as well. So, for example, right here, to craft the cards themselves to make the prime or to make the actual base card, you will need three of every single awakened uh, elemental. So, the, the demand for these elementals will be sky high early in the expansion, and you as a gold farmer can capitalize on this by farming these materials while they are in incredibly high in price. So with that being said, we have now established there is going to be a very high demand for these materials. So with that being said, where can you farm for them? Okay, so the first location that I want to show you is located right here in the Waking Shores, which is right here, very close to where you actually start your Dragonflight journey. So if you're doing the side quest, which is this one right here, the Erstwild Ecologists, you might be actually doing these quests while you're scaling or questing through the expansion. So this is an area you might find super early, but if you just follow the campaign, you will definitely miss out on this one. So I want to show you guys the farm itself, just in case you don't do the side quest, then you don't know about the farm. 
farm but here we go so let's talk about it i have actually made some images here as well just to show you the farm so here we go the location is in the red circle that is located on the eastern side of the map and the main materials here are awakened ear and awakened frost once again they are used in different crafts primarily for example the darkman cards and also crafting the specifically the ear card trinket where you will need 10 awakened ear so the note here is that there are a lot of elementals on this part of the map within the circle both water elementals and air elementals and you can farm here quite efficiently for awakened ear and awakened frost the mobs are pretty spread out so farming in a group is recommended two times four farming might even be a possibility but at least being in a five-man group instead of so solo will increase the efficiency quite a bit so i also want to fly around show you guys some of the mobs so once again we're located right here now so you will see there's a bunch of air elementals right here for example you will see air elemental right here you will have another elemental over here as well so over here you might have like two people farming all of these and you might have a monk statue in the middle grabbing them towards the monk statue or you might be a group of for example five druids as well picking one location each and farming for two minutes then flying around and looting the reason for this is that there's so many mobs spread out all across the area so farming in a group just makes it much more simple to actually um, activate the hyper spawn here you will have some of these uh, water elementals as well and walking around the place you will have a mix of both water elementals like this one and air elementals like the other ones we just showcased as well so all around this place around the circle you saw in the beginning you will have tons of elementals and the further in you go over here the more water elementals there is like right here you have a water elemental you will have a bunch of them over here as well so yeah very good farming location especially for a group farm and definitely worth checking else and one of the farms you should be knowing about before dragonflight comes out with that being said though let's check out location number two Okay, so location number two is also, once again, located in the Waking Shores. I want to keep this video specifically for the Waking Shores. There's so many gold farming opportunities in this zone, and it's also the first one you will find when you enter Dragon, uh, Dragon Isles. So here we go, it's located right here. And you might go along this location while you're doing some quests, especially while you're doing a world quest. There's a world quest spawning over here as well. So once again, we made some pictures and a note for this one. And it's an Awakened Fire Farm. You might be getting some Awakened the water and the air as well based on there being some tormented steam elementals so over here this is a really good farm for rousing fire or or awakened fire there's lots of small steaming elementals in one location these guys are also part of a world quest meaning they do hyper spawn and uh, as it's all in one pretty condensed area aka it's a high density mob location it is a great place to farm both solo and in a group it is a very possible two by four or at least a five man group farm for awakened fire which is a prime mirror reagent used in many high-end crafts in dragonflight and also one of the main uh, dark moon card trinkets will be requiring 10 awakened fires to actually skill it up or make it the best one so you will need 13 awakened fires just on that one by itself and also once again blacksmithing requires them a lot for the obsidian seared alloy and also the frost fire alloys as well so awakened fires will definitely be in high demand very early on i can tell you that one for sure and this is a very good location to farm them so just diving down here just show you guys roughly what it looks like if i just try to hit the statue right here we can get a very good oversight the one thing you want to avoid is this elite in the middle but you want to pull around him as well so if you pull him or have him constantly on the monk statue or something that could definitely work he is also part of the world quest by the way but you will see so many mobs in this location right here there's two mobs fighting each other for example so tag them very fast and they do respawn super fast as well so there's some uh, provoking flames there are some steaming elementals as well tormented steam and they should all be dropping uh, awakened fires for you and also if you just want to focus on this part that's fine but if you want to trigger the hyper spawn you have to pull down here as well so you want to make your way down here and pull these guys and just make sure you pull everything so for example you can see there's some mobs down here and as long as you clear these guys and these guys here on this side of the boss and the ones on the other side you should be fine and they should be hyper spawning so make sure if you are trying to trigger the hyper spawn kill all the mobs in the area otherwise it's not going to work but once you've killed all of them the hyper spawn should be active so we have to trigger the hyper spawn you have to pull on both sides of the boss so what you could do here for example if you have a monk statue in the middle which the boss is going to be constantly attacking so a monk statue in the middle and have druids run around the place pull the mobs all the way back to the monk statue and based on this reach right here it might just work 
with a 2x4. But yeah, very good farm to know about for Dragonflight. Let's check out the last one, which is not an elemental farming uh, location, but it's actually based on skinning, and I want to show you guys this one. It's one that many people might have picked up on if you played the beta, or seen someone else play the beta, but it's actually really, really good, so I want to show it to you. Okay, so the third and final location for this video is actually right here as you enter the Dragon Isles. So this right here is going to be the base camp and it's going to look different to you than it does for me right now. Because I have progressed, I've been progressing the campaign, so for me this is no longer a questing area. But for you it's going to be a little bit different, but it's going to look somewhat of the same. So this is going to be where you land when you actually enter the Dragon Isles in Dragonflight. And uh, this is going to be a very good gold farm if you have skinning. So for this one, go over here to... Uh, the wing rest embassy as soon as possible grab skinning then go back and start farming this is going to be a very good gold farm at the beginning of dragon uh, the dragon flight and i'll tell you why in just a second but let me show you the location on the map in terms of a picture and why we're farming here so this is basically what it looks like and what we're farming for here is first of all uh lustrous scaled hide this is one of them also flawless proto dragon scales you'll be, you'll be getting tons of these by the way both the lustral scale hide and also the flawless proto dragon scale and also adamant on scale, ad adamant scales. You'll be getting tons of those as well. You'll also be getting some saturated bones and curious hide scraps. These are capped, so you can only get I think it's six of them per week, just to give you guys more skinning. You get more skinning knowledge basically that you can put into skinning to become better at skinning as well. So if you don't know about the, that part, basically when you choose a profession, you can go to specializations and apply knowledge points to different types of knowledges to make you better at your profession. So by getting those, you'll be getting more stuff from your professions, basically. So personally, I've been going into harvesting to give me more deafness, and also to actually give me more damage points, and uh, yeah, just pick one of them. You have tanning, harvesting, and baitcrafter. I've actually done a skinning guide as well to talk more about that and the specializations more in depth. But let's go back to the farm though, so let me remove the picture. And uh, here we go. So for the farm itself, it's located right outside here. And you can see right now, even on the beta, there's so many skinnable mobs right here that you don't even have to kill yourself. You don't have to kill the mobs by yourself. You can just run around and grab other, people, other people's mobs. Like right now, we just got one lustrous adamant scale right there. And uh, the thing is, when you start out, you only have one skill in skinning, but skilling up goes super fast. And one tip is that you can skin these primal proto whelps as well, but they only give you trash. So for me, my advice here is that while skilling up skinning, skin all of these whelps as well. But once you have max skill, like I currently do, only focus on the drakes because they are going to be what makes you your gold. But while while skilling up, do you choose to skin all of these whelps as well at the same time, just to give you guys more stuff and to skill up faster. So this is going to be a very good location for exactly the reason I'm showing you right now. You don't have to kill the mobs by yourself, you can just leech kills from other people, and when Dragonflight comes out, not everyone will actually go to the first skill location right here to pick up Dragonflight skinning. So a lot of people will opt to just choose to do the campaign and level through the campaign as quickly as possible, and not skinning the mobs because once again you have to go past this place to pick up skinning so by you having the knowledge of this being a farming location you can go to the first location right here at the wing rest embassy i can show you the actual trainer as well where you can train skinning then go back to this location and before i go there i just want to show you guys there's so many drakes and right here the mobs like these guys are also killing the drakes so you can just skin these guys for free as well so you don't even need other players to kill the mobs for you every now and then the guards will really be killing the mobs for you as well so if i just pull this one down to the guards they're going to take care of that one just like so and now i can skin that guy you can see they literally one shot him as well so if you want to use this as a gold farm you can just pull these guys back to the guards and they will handle the mob for you but when dragonflight comes out the reason why this is going to be good is that these guys are hyper spawning there's going to be so many drakes on the ground just wait and see so if you are if you're the only person with skinning you're going to be swimming in gold and you're going to be getting so many skins and so many flawless proto dragon scales and also lustrous scaled hides and even if you're only level 60 you start getting tier 3 and tier 2 stuff once you have max skill so it doesn't matter what level you are or what level the mobs are all that matters is your skill so once again go over here and the skinning trainer is going to be right here so go to Toninar, which is located in this village 
village, pick up skinning, go back and farm. And yeah, that's going to be it for today guys, I do hope this video helps some of you make a lot of gold in Dragonflight, and once again if you want access to over 40 more different gold farming locations, some of which are going to make you absolutely rich on day one, check out my Dragonflight gold guide to the link down below where we have even more gold farms and access to an exclusive community for gold making, so if you want to make gold in the expansion definitely consider checking it out, you get it for half price by using the code Solheim, and that is pretty much it for today, I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, let me know in the comment section down below if you have any other gold farms you want to share and also subscribe to the channel for access to even more stuff and also just to not miss out on future dragonflight videos i'll be pumping out gold making videos and you definitely want to be there as soon as possible to take advantage of them either way thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again very soon